Wren chapter five. And this one is called A Christmas Surprise and it has a little picture at the beginning. Christmas is coming, Christmas is coming. Marie put her arms around Karen and squeezed her hard. Christmas is the most wonderful, exciting day in the whole year. We'll write a letter to Santa Claus and buy a big tree and eat lots of turkey and get lots of presents. Marie and Mommy wrote a letter to Santa. Daddy took it to New York to mail it. Marie asked Santa for presents Karen would like, but she thought the best present would be a doctor who would help Karen use her arms and her legs. Every time that Marie saw John running away from Kathy, she wished Karen could run too. One bright afternoon, two weeks before Christmas, Marie and her mother went up to the attic. They put Karen in the playpen and sat Denise beside her to keep her company. Marie loved the attic. It had a tingly smell from the cedar wood and was filled with interesting boxes. These boxes had all kinds of surprises under their dusty covers. Marie was especially delighted this day because they were gonna do something they only did once a year. They were going up for the Christmas boxes. These were enchanting because they were filled with beauty for Jesus's birthday. There were the tree lights, red, blue, yellow, green, all strung on a green cord. There were bunches and bunches of silver tinsel. Some of the tinsel was so old it had turned gold. Marie liked this best and so did her mother. Way back in the corner was a pile of boxes that was taller than Marie. It had millions and trillions of ornaments in it. Every box had a label on it which told you just what was inside. Marie read the labels as her mother handed her the boxes. Silver trumpets, snowballs, candy canes, make-believe, tiny balls for the top of the tree, stars, cornucopias, angel's hair, medium-sized balls, all colors, great big balls for lower branches, all colors, little sleds with children on them, reindeer, Santa Claus is made of silk and stuffed, big Christmas stockings. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Grandpa did that. For Mommy, Daddy, Marie, Karen, strings of red and green beads and strings of colored paper made by Marie. Mummy said these were the prettiest of all. Big silver star for tip top of the tree. Marie always helped her mother and father put the lights and tinsel on the tree, but the ornaments were left around the bottom for Santa to put on. Marie and Mummy carried these boxes downstairs and Mummy said, now for the best boxes of all. Her eyes were shining. Come on, Mummy, hurry, cried Marie, and her eyes were shining too. Hurry, hurry, Karen repeated. We'll be right back, sweetheart, Mummy told Karen. Just wait until you see what's in the best boxes of all. Marie and Mummy raced each other up the attic stairs. Marie won. Way, way back in the corner was an old blue bureau. It had fairies curtains on it. Some people who don't know any better call them cobwebs. Slowly, carefully, Marie and her mother opened the large middle drawer. Inside were white boxes tied with satin ribbons. Gently, they took them out and carried them downstairs. They placed them around Karen's playpen. Wait till you see, Karen. Marie was dancing with excitement. Just wait, you'll love what's in these boxes. Love them best of all. Mommy watched while Marie untied the ribbons and took off the covers. Karen watched too. Her eyes got rounder and rounder. Mother helped Marie take out wads of tissue paper and underneath there was a stable, a brown building made of wood, not quite like a house because it only had three sides and the front was open. Bundles of straw, a cow, four big white sheep, eight little white lambs, two gray rabbits, a squirrel, a mouse, two shaggy sheep dogs, a calf, a donkey, three goats with long beards, a shepherd dog, a shepherd boy with a red woolen coat, a father shepherd, a little wooden bed called a manger, a beautiful, beautiful lady in a long blue cloak. She had golden hair and she, and she was smiling. A handsome man in a brown robe. He had sandals on his feet. He was leaning on a staff. He looked proud and happy and the loveliest baby that ever was. The baby was wrapped in soft white stuff. His chubby little arms reached out as though he was saying, come love me, I love you. Marie said, oh, ah, gimme. So Karen said that. Marie laughed and said, she thinks they're dolls. You tell her what they are, Mummy suggested. So Karen, so Marie sat on the floor and her mother put Karen in her lap. Karen, honey, began Marie, this is the real Christmas. She held up the figure of the baby so Karen could see it. She kissed it. This is baby Jesus. Christmas is his birthday. 
This is why Christmas is all love. She picked up the figure of the beautiful lady and showed it to Karen. This is his mommy. Her name is Mary. She loves him very much. She loves you very much, too. God made her more beautiful than any other lady. Marie put the lady in Karen's arms and took up the figure of the handsome man. And this is Joseph, she told her little sister. He is Mary's husband and father to baby Jesus. He loves the baby with his whole heart. He loves you, too. He took good care of Mary and the baby. Next, Marie picked up the shepherd boy. She went on. One night, this little boy was in the field with his daddy, watching his flock of sheep. They had all these dogs to help them, and Marie put two dogs beside Karen. It was very cold, she continued, and they were shivering. All of a sudden, way, way up in the sky, a star began to shine brighter and brighter. Then it grew bigger and bigger and bigger until the dark sky was all light. The shepherd boy and his daddy stood still and looked up in wonder. They didn't feel cold anymore. While they were looking, they heard wonderful music, soft at first, then it swelled and was joined with the most beautiful voices singing. And the shepherd boy and his daddy saw in the sky angels. They could understand all the words the angels sang. Glory to God in the highest. Tonight a baby is born in a stable. His name is Jesus. He is God become man. He's lying in a manger. Go and see him. So the shepherd boy and his daddy followed the star to the stable in Bethlehem. They took a birthday present to the baby, one of the little white lambs. But they gave him another present that the baby liked better. They gave him their love. So pretty, said Karen. More. Now it's time to set up our crib, Mommy told her, gathering up the figures. The Christmas scene was set up on a long, big table. Marie and her mother made hills and valleys from books covered with a sheet and cotton and sprinkled with snow powder. They put pine branches around the stable for trees and made little woods of them on the side hill of a hill. They sprinkled them with snow dust too. Then they stood Mary and Joseph beside the manger and the cow and the donkey at the foot of the manger. The shepherd boy and his daddy were off in the field, hurrying towards the stable. The flock was grazing on the side of the hill while the dogs guarded them. The bunnies hopped across the snow to see the baby and the squirrel and the mouse shyly peeked around the corner of the stable. The goats walked slowly along the path, their heads turned toward the manger. Marie filled the manger with straw and then, most lovingly, placed the baby with his arms outstretched to all of the world. Mummy was holding Karen up so she could watch all that was done, and Karen kept saying, Oh, see, Mom? Oh, see? Pretty baby! Marie was thinking how happy they would all be if Karen could walk over to the crib and put out her hand and touch the baby. Marie knelt down in front of the baby and whispered softly so Karen couldn't hear. Dear baby Jesus, Christmas is your birthday. Couldn't you bring Karen a present? Please, please help mommy and daddy find a doctor who will teach Karen to use her arms and legs. Please, baby, thank you. Just two days before Christmas, daddy said to Marie, you're going to spend the day with Kathy and John. Mommy and I have found another doctor. We want to, we want to see Karen. Will he help her, daddy? Marie asked hopefully. We don't know, princess. We can only wait and see. We must keep looking and you must keep praying. If God wants her to walk, he'll help us to find the right doctor. I will, daddy. I will, Marie promised. I'll ask Kathy to say a prayer too. And maybe John, although he forgets to finish a prayer and starts blowing bubbles. And Marie did pray while she was playing with Johnny, while she was helping Mrs. Rudy with the lunch dishes, while she was helping Kathy clean the silver. She slept at the Rudy's house that night, but before breakfast the next morning, she ran up the hill, hoping her mother and father had reached home. She was in such a hurry that she ran in the kitchen door, boots, snow, and all. Karen was in her high chair, and her mother and father were sitting at the kitchen table. When Mummy saw Marie, she started to cry. Mummy threw her arms around. Marie threw her arms around Mummy and squeezed her tight. Daddy put his arms around both of them. Princess, princess, he said as his voice was shaking as if he were going to cry too. We found the doctor. We saw him yesterday. Karen's going to sit up and use her hands and walk. He says she's very, very smart. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. And so it was that baby Jesus gave Karen her present for his birthday.